Ben was diagnosed with autism when he was 16 months old. He has quite severe autism. Um, and as he got older, by the time he was five or six, the most difficult part of his autism was his behavior, his physical behavior. He was throwing himself around. He would walk on kitchen cupboards, on worktops. He would balance on the top of the banisters at the top of the stairs. Um, he wouldn't walk on the floor with flat feet. He would insist on walking on something on the floor. And he was diagnosed with, in addition to his autism, sensory integration disorder. He was assessed then, but it was a very new diagnosis. It was a very new science. Nobody knew really how to treat it. Had some ideas, but it was really left. But we did learn that alongside the sensory integration order, he also had a ADHD and he was put on medication for the ADHD, which did calm him considerably, so we could live with it. Fast forward 10 years on from there, and we had a 16-year-old who wouldn't leave the house, was highly anxious, was spending a lot of time, strangely enough, sitting, well, not sitting, lying with his back on the floor and his legs in the air, or, with his back on the chair and his head over the end of the chair onto the floor, he was becoming more and more withdrawn. His food intake was becoming narrower. And in the end, in desperation really, I got hold of the behavioral outreach support team, that's called BOSS, and asked them for their input. And that's how I came to the service. Ben's behavior had changed and we couldn't put our finger on why. We knew, or we felt it wasn't due to the autism, it was being driven by something else. Um, we looked at the environment, we looked at the people who worked with Ben, we looked at added stressors, the fact that he was finishing his class at school and would be moving to the post-16 unit, same school but different, different area, different teachers, different other pupils, and it still didn't, help us understand why he was being the way he was. And I'd explained this to the staff at the boss team. And Steve, who I think is the manager of the team, suggested that Ben had a ses uh, sensory assessment again. I think if I had not known and have already had involvement with the team, I don't know how I would have accessed it. Because the way parents access the team is either through their paediatrician or occasionally through your children's social worker. The service reacted very quickly when I told them of my concerns. Anna came out to see us, who, she, she just made me feel so, so reassured. She was intensely knowledgeable. She understood more or less straight away what we were concerned about with Ben. She interacted well with Ben, which is a big help, and she didn't seem daunted by what I saw as the task ahead, and she was very positive about changes that could be made. Um, I found that really reassuring, because sometimes with autism, professionals sort of shrug their shoulders and say, well, it, he is autistic, you know, as if you don't. We, first of all, I agreed to attend a four-week session at Ben's school, which was just two hours once a week, to go over the basics again in what sensory impairment is and how it affects the sensory integration parts of the brain. So I attended with one of the lady who helps us with the boys. And that refreshed my mind about the issues that we were dealing with. Then Anna actually suggested that Ben had some therapy, sensory therapy, in the sensory therapy unit, which is at a school in Poole, if she could find the right hours and the right time to book Ben in, because obviously it couldn't be used during school hours. I was concerned about this because when Ben's done a full day at school, to actually engage him after school is quite difficult. He's exhausted. 
and we've concentrated on feeding him, getting him clean, getting him ready for bed. So to fit in an extra half an hour was, was quite difficult into that. But Anna booked the sessions, we went along, and the first session was on one of the hottest days in July as well, which I worried about, but they, they both coped okay. And he was quite disordered in a way afterwards, but he was okay. He didn't react as badly as I feared he had. He had six sessions. And by the sixth session, we couldn't believe the change. This summer, for the first time, we've had a Ben who will go out with us, who will go to places he's never been before, who asked to go to places rather than grudgingly coming along, who came and sat on a particular chair in our sitting room, which he doesn't like at all because he feels the surface is uneven, who came and sat and watched some television with us, who has removed his ear defenders so that he is definitely less sensitive to sound. He's lost some of his jerky movements that people find quite off-putting. We're used to it, but his movement, his whole way of walking has become smoother. And I find it amazing that this is after six sessions of therapy. We have a different child. We have always had to have a car with three rows of seats in it. Um, so the boys, I don't have one of the boys in the front, one's in the middle and one's on the back row. This summer, we actually, for the first time, I felt confident enough to have one in the front with me and one on the seat behind, so that was a step forward. Then at one point, we actually had them, not side by side on the back seat, but we had one young person, one carer, one other son on the other side. And that is the first time since they were both in baby car seats they have been on that same level of seating together. I think I put that down to the fact that for Daniel, the old, my older son, Ben was making less sudden jerky movements and less sudden noise, which he can do, and that distresses Daniel, which is why we've always had to keep them separate. Ben seems to have stopped making those noises, and I can only put that down to the therapy that if he'd been able to access those sessions during school time, would he have needed so many? Could it have worked earlier? Could it have worked sooner? Um, is it something that could have been built into the school day? I, I think it's a shame that there is only this one therapy suite in, as far as I'm aware, Dorset. My concerns would be for parents who perhaps aren't as well connected to the services as we are. Perhaps parents whose children are newly diagnosed or who have been diagnosed, like mine were, quite young, but have been ticking over dealing with these problems and not having the sort of support that we've got from being in the system for a long time. But for us personally, the service was excellent. Ben finished his last session in July of this year. We had then had the six weeks summer holiday where, like I say, it was fantastic. He has gone backwards a bit and I contacted Anna and said, could we go over some of the stuff? Could he have just a couple of top-up sessions with you? And she has managed to arrange that. Ben is 17 now. Next September, he becomes 18. He will then no longer be under that team. He passes over to adult services. It concerns me a little because I don't know what support services there are available in adult services. I am happy, very happy at the moment that I could contact Anna and go back to her with any questions.